Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The only academy that gives you the credentials to become a certified tech and or certified inspector. If you leave comments on our YouTube channel, and if they're good, we'll go ahead and answer those. So be a good YouTuber, go ahead and subscribe, and then answer, ask your questions. We'll be more than happy to go ahead and answer them. Why does my propane tank freeze when it's 36 degrees? You may have seen my propane video here, and if you haven't, go ahead and click. Then come back to this question. Well, we, as I said before, that propane exists. It actually turns into a vapor at negative 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the reason why it doesn't freeze in the summer uh, simply is because, of course, we have a lot of heat outside, but mainly because we're not using that propane, right? There has to be a change from the liquid to the vapor form in order for there to be any type of heat exchange on the outside. Well, that comes from demand. You're not running your furnace during the summer, so there's not a lot of demand. It's typically in the winter when we have a lot of demand. Well, what happens is we have a greater demand coming from our furnace than we have heat outside because again, we turn on our furnace when it's cold outside. I don't have the heat bearing down on the outside of that tank, keeping it warm. It's cold outside and I've got a lot of that propane that's being used, turning from a liquid to a vapor, which begins to freeze the outside. So ironically, we use propane for heat but we get this condition outside because our tanks are outside where it begins to freeze up. Now, for typical transport, the DOT wants that strapped down. And again, it has to be eight times in any direction. However, you know, if you're just going to fill and refill, I'm not a, I'm not a DOT, you know, uh, police officer, don't claim to be one, but I would presume that they would allow you to transport back and forth, kind of like fireworks. You know, it's kind of illegal for you to transport fireworks, but how do you get it? from the fireworks stand to wherever you're shooting them off. There's that little caveat there. So don't claim to be a cop, you know, and I do support the blue, but just saying that if you're gonna go fill those up, yes, an, a milk crate is still better than nothing, but if it's long-term transporting, so in other words, you're actually on, you're hooked up to your RV, they don't want those sitting in the back of the truck. Now, ASME tanks, again, they're kind of like that uh, forklift tank, it's built to be transported on the side. So we'll see all the safety devices are actually elevated, not in the middle, but upwards of that 80% mark should it be filled from the bottom up. So they're actually built that way. Again, we're distinguishing between a DOT cylinder, ASME tank, or forklift tank. So I also did a video on uh, suggesting running your uh, water pump instead of being hooked up to city water and you have questions. So let's look at them. So here's one of the main questions that come back. Can I run city water and the pump at the same time? Well, here's the thing. Those pumps will seek anywhere from 45 PSI to 55 PSI. And if you're getting that from the city, the pump will never turn on. If you're in a municipality or an area where um, the city drops below that 45 PSI, yes, your pump can kick on, but here's the question. Why would you run both? Again, if you're in a city and the municipality, you know, the water pressure keeps adjusting, why not just use your water tank, fill up your holding tank and use your water pump and get constant pressure. Now I understand that some of you, maybe the tank is dirty or anything like that. You know, I get that. I'm saying if it's clean, you know, if your pump is working, we can get constant pressure from our pump and we don't need help from the city. Running both though, um, having that uh, electricity on sitting there, it's just waiting. What'll happen a lot of times is when that pump finally kicks on, we're gonna get some pressure that's coming back through that uh, water pump, and we can actually end up damaging the heads in that water pump if too much pressure comes back from the city. It's not best to run them both at the same time. I'd recommend if you're gonna run your water pump, just fill up your tank and use your water pump. If you're gonna use city, just use city not really recommended to run both of them at the same time. Also, we did a video on the different types of batteries and boy, did you have questions. Do you need different chargers for different type of batteries? Absolutely. So I'm gonna lump them into two different categories, gel, AGM, and uh, lead acid. All three we'll just consider as a lead acid and that will use one type of charger. It could be a multi-stage charger. Maximum that we'll actually do our float charge is at 13.2 volts. When we switch over to lithium, and with lithium batteries, the uh, state of charge in those are about 14.4 volts. Well, voltage runs downhill, so I need a special charger 
that can overcome that 14.4 to 14.6 volts. So if I lump them into two different categories, I've got my AGM, gel cell, and lead acid batteries. Well, that's our standard converter charger. If you ever upgrade to lithium, then you need to have a lithium charger that can overcome that 14.4 volts continuous. Man, you guys have too many questions. Why don't you just come to class? We did a video on refrigerators. For some of us with an RV style refrigerator, we have a fan in the back. And the only time we have a fan is when that refrigerator is in a slide out. So can we add a fan to our refrigerator? Well, it's not my first choice, okay? The fans that are on there, uh, first off, do not stay on all the time. Dometic may have it come on at 110 degrees and turn off at 160. Norcold may have it come on at 90 and go off at 60. So it's not best to always add another fan, especially when it's cold outside. There needs to be a heat transfer that's actually built up. But is it bad if it's summertime, can you add a fan? Again, the first thing that I would do is I'd make sure that the refrigerator's properly installed and we have the proper airflow. If we're not achieving the proper airflow by making sure it's installed correctly, yes, we can add a fan. Yes, you can turn it on. And if it's the summer months, you can keep it on. Just understand as we get into autumn and we get into fall, those are two of the same things. And then winter, definitely you wanna turn that fan off because we want that heat to be built up up there. Man, all right, so there's a question about keeping rodents out. Okay, guys, you got me, right? I've seen all these different things out there using soap, you know, using bars of Irish Spring, and then you got pictures of people saying, look, rats ate it up, right? I mean, to me, the best thing to do is get you a little cat, all right? Get you a cat, don't feed it. I mean, don't be that way, but you know what I'm saying. Keep them right on the edge of being hungry. They will eat those rats, right? They'll take care of them. Guys, our RV parks are outside the park, you know, outside the city limits, usually in a kind of a wooded area. That's just something we deal with. I mean, I've seen people say, put lights down there. They won't walk across the lights. And for some people that works, and for some people it doesn't. Short of actually building a moat around your rig, but then again, I've seen rats that float. Ever seen any nutria? If you wanna be able to fix the majority of the problems on your rig, but let's say you wanna open up a business, become a certified inspector or a certified RV technician, head over to our website at nrvta.com, click on programs and get started today. But if they're bad, gonna ignore them. Not gonna be, I'm gonna be honest here. Stop being a jerk. Oh, so, so go ahead, so go ahead. Jeez, all right, we did a video you're not running your, um, uh, you're not running your, uh, <laughs> damn. Guys, I, I don't know what to say. You know, a little small bit pellet gun, you know, if you wanna do that. I'm not part of the QAnon. Also, a while back we did a, uh, a video. <laughs> <laughs>